everyone, Therese here. I hope that you are doing well. I hope August has got off to a decent start for you. I know for some people, the energy's kind of been like, <laughs> energy's been low or dense, right? And interestingly enough, I'm watching the Schumann Resonance and even that has been sort of lower than we're, um, used to actually it's like when it goes down low it almost feels it almost feels off in some right. way to work on bringing up your own energy is to simply chant you know raise my frequency raise my frequency raise my frequency raise my frequency it might not feel like it's doing anything for you at first it might feel like just words, but after you say it a few times, you'll start to feel your own energy picking up, and that's definitely a way that it can help. I just asked the team, like, what is the message that you have during this the time? The message is about changing the, the personal will to the higher will. So it's my will to thy will. And Interestingly enough, they said that when we are trying so hard to assert our own will from our, our very human perspective, that we are trying to micromanage the universe. Isn't that really interesting? Think about it. When you're trying to get your way, you're micromanaging the universe. You're pushing against the natural flow. So if you think about how nature operates, right? How we were talking about this before, how it's all about evolution and adaptation. And that um, nature itself is moving with the will of, of force energy, of source, right? It's moving with source. So however source guides nature, that's how it stays in the flow. This is how seasons work together. And um, and the, the flow of, you know, prey animals to predatory animals works together and creates a balanced environment. A story I heard years ago where they tried to reduce the wolf population in the park um, to preserve, I think, the antelope or something like that. They tried to reduce the wolf population. What ended up happening is then in about 10 years or so, the river started going dry. And they didn't understand why until they looked at the sort of the ecosystem and the natural structure of how it was all working together. And what was happening was because there weren't as many wolves in the park, the antelope had begun to multiply more and they were eating away at the grasses of the bank of the river. And that was slowly spreading the, the river's bank until it had flattened out. And the water was flowing out too wide and it was like thinning out and eventually it had dried up the riverbed. When they brought the wolves back into the park, the natural ecosystem started to balance itself out and the river began to flow. And they only figured this out, I think, after they brought the wolves back and they saw that the river started to flow again. So isn't that interesting? Like nature, <laughs> intrinsically, the universe, knows how to create a balanced and harmonious environment. And interestingly enough, it was with human intervention that it started to, right, it started to go off balance. So the message today is about understanding that um, we, want, we want to start moving our will, what we believe we should um, ha be, do, and have to a, our higher self level, our, a higher level of connection. Now this might feel great for some people and might cause a little um, anxiety in others. Um, and I think that that has to do with a belief about how supported you are by the universe, right? So if we believe that the universe has our back and is actually conspiring in our favor, it's really easy for us to say, hey, you take the wheel. <laughs> Just this is where I want to go. You you drive me in the direction. Like use my life in a way that brings the most alignment to all that I come into contact with, right? So if we believe the universe has our back and actually cares about us, it's easier for us to allow our um, to let go of our personal will and ask to be used more like a channel. And we're talking about trust in the universe creates 
the um, trust in the universe creates that softening or the, the ability to turn over the reins to a higher source because we, be, we will believe that the universe is going to ultimately protect us and our highest good and be working in our favor even if we can't always see how that works out. When we don't necessarily believe, when we might want to believe, we might really be like, I really want the universe to have my back, but I'm just not sure. Too many random things happen, right? So look at this thing. Look at that. Look at that thing. Look at this big thing that's happening, right? And we might go, oh my God, I don't know if it has my back at all. I think it might be just totally random. Well, if you thought it, you know, if you're, if that's your mindset, if that's your thinking, that's going to cause you anxiety to go, I'm just going to give my will and direction over to something bigger than me when you're not even sure that the universe is listening or caring or has um or that your needs even matter does that make sense so when we when we hold on to that fear even if it's just a little doubt or nugget we tend to hold deeply onto what we think we're supposed to what life is supposed to be about we get really fixed and rigid and controlling and, um, right, the intention is good. The intention is simply to take care of ourselves and, and others in the way that we think it should look like, right? We, got a bit, we get that fixed mindset. We get really clear on what we think it's going to look like and what it, what's um, helpful and benevolent. But we're also holding on really tight and we're trying to control it. And when it looks like it's veering off in a direction we don't like, we get really... Uh, we're restrictive and we try to squeeze the flow again, right? So as we're trying to squeeze the flow, we're moving into control. And we want to step back and review what we know about the natural timeline and the false or negative timeline. Here we are. We've got control as a mechanism of the false timeline, um, which is very limiting and tends to be self-serving. And then we've got the positive, natural, organic timeline, which is all about acceptance. And acceptance means like, I don't know how this is working out in my favor. I just believe it is, right? And that might seem a little Pollyanna to some. And it definitely requires a, some optimism, right? Because you're not going to get everything it wants. And that's something that's scary when we try to turn our will over to a higher power. Uh, when we can see it happening in our lives, when we start to see benefits from letting go of the reins a little bit and asking uh, source, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, to start guiding us, use me as an instrument of thy peace. That's one I love saying every morning. That's uh, St. Francis of Assisi. I love that quote. Make me an instrument of thy peace or use me as a channel or work through me, or my will is thy will. Like, right, when we ask the universe to use us, we don't always know what we're getting into, and it doesn't always look like maybe what we hope it's gonna look like, like an easy day full of beautiful surprises. Sometimes that's what it look like. looks like. Other times it looks like things falling apart and crumbling. And you're like, why God, why? <laughs> when I said I'd be willing to work with you, are you taking this all down? And that's the funny thing. Um, that's the funny thing about this is sometimes God's like, this foundation sucks. Everything that is here, you built, you know, this foundation's cracking, it's falling apart. It was built on sand. There's not a lot of substance to it. Um, and so we're going to take it all down and we're going to rebuild it. And it might be the foundation is a lack of belief in you or, or, you know, fear-based thoughts about others or whatever it is. Sometimes when we open up to a higher power, when we ask it to start using us as a channel for life force energy, it can either feel amazing at times or it can feel like you're getting a total rehaul. Um, but it's always for the highest good and that includes you. So I want to talk about service to others because so many people who resonate with these talks I do you guys are service to others. I know it. You wouldn't even give this like five minutes if it if that didn't resonate for you. You'd just be like, bye. Um, so the fact that you're listening means something about that resonates to you. Um, you're, there's very likely you're a healer. You're a teacher. You're empathic. You are here to be of service to others in some amazing and beautiful way. 
Um, what we have a tendency to do, myself included, is forget that service to others includes us. Service to others includes service to you. And that can be really confusing when you break down the polarity and you've got service to others and service to self, right? Because if service to others includes me, isn't that service to self? And weirdly, it is. It's all encapsulating. Um, but it's balanced. It's a balanced view. It, it, anything that rejects a part of the whole is technically service to self. Weirdly, if you're so focused on other people that you reject yourself, there is a the rejection of self has a negative component to it. Um, so when we are afraid to allow the universe, source, God, whatever you want to call it, to guide us, there's this, sometimes there's a fear in there that my own needs won't get met. And even the most giving person has that fear that if I give myself over to something, I'm going to disappear. And there is a part that disappears, but it's not the true essence of you. It's this ego idea of control. It's the idea of individualism or even the sensation that you have control, right? So we have free will. We have the ability to experience um, separation. That's, that's the illusion right now. That's what we've left. Third density, that rate of consciousness that was vibrating was the illusion of separation. Um, that we're all individuals and we either go it, to, we can choose to go it together or go it alone. There can be a weird fear when you ask to be used by a higher, your higher power and let that start working through your life that somehow your own needs won't get met. Um, which means, and all that simply tells me is that my ego still, still doesn't quite get it. Like it doesn't understand that separation is, is a false construct. Every day you can choose the path of, uh, I'm asking this to come in. So remember free will, paramount. You get to decide if today, right, your, uh, this part of you, the human part of you is in control and is gonna try and mastermind this whole plan. Uh, that, that gets to be your choice. And then you can also choose that you're going to sort of plug in and open up to something um, higher that has a bird's eye view of the entire situation, right? So they, they want me to, to share this metaphor. So I want you to think about it like this. The, the complete difference is, let's imagine we're at a concert together and we're standing in the crowd on the ground, right? And the stage is a couple yards in front of us and there are people of all heights around us and what we can see about what's going on is from that ground view sort of like looking over the shoulders of the people in front of you so that would be kind of akin to our human viewpoint about everything that's working right now everything that's going on we can only see it from wherever we're standing and we can see part of the crowd we can see part of the stage but now they said, imagine that you can go up and out of your body and almost get a bird's eye view, right? Where you get to look down and not only do you see yourself, you see the entire crowd, how big the crowd is, where the crowd is located, the landscape around the crowd, the, the front of the stage, the back of the stage, all the trucks and, and everything, the parking lot, all the way out. You get to see everything around you. Now, there's these are the two POVs that are happening right now, one of them has the total picture and one of them has part of the picture. So when you think about it that way, what part of you do you wanna be operating from? It's totally a choice. Do you wanna be operating from like the ground view where you know, you're know you going to have to make a lot of assumptions about how it's all working based on what you can see? Or would you like to be operating from a bird's eye view where you can see the entire layout and, and therefore you navigate sort of more organically through whatever comes next because you see it all, right? You see every, how everything works. The choice is ours. And in the, the eyes of source, God, universe, 
all choices are good because all choices bring information, which is why we're not limited in making any choice. We get to make whatever choice we want to and it's all good because it, it's all information for our own life, for our own experience. If we want to move into more ease and grace and alignment, if we can let go of what we think should happen next, and this is tough. I'm not, I mean, it, I don't succeed at this every um, day. There, on those days when it's, when we're working from that human level where we're like, if it goes like this, this, or this, then things are going well. And then those things don't happen. It's like you fall apart, you fall into a bad mood, your vibration lowers, and then you start becoming a little bit more controlling and restrictive because now everything in your environment starts to feel out of your control. Whereas if you ask to be connected in, right, to your higher vision, to your higher self and to source, and allow that to operate through you, what it gives you is the power of acceptance and you get to experience life as more of an observer and that doesn't mean you're not having the personal experience but you also have this extra set of awareness over and behind you allowing you to see how these dots connect and that perhaps what I'm seeing here there is there is a it gives you a little bit of foresight, a little bit of, of slight premonition that you can sort of see how this could even, even this situation could work out um, for the best for all, even though in this moment you can't see that. So when we connect into that natural source flow energy, when we step back and kind of say, I can't get it right now, so I'm giving this to you for the highest good of all beings. I give this to you, right? Whatever you want to say that kind of connects you in. When you get that, right? It's it's interesting how you also get sort of a... You don't get caught up in the drama of it anymore. The You get a, a sort of shield of protection because you have a an awareness around you um, that allows you to, to go, I don't get this yet, but I... I don't get it yet, but I will. And I know that's such a weird statement, but you you understand that when you feel it, when you're like, I don't get this yet, but I will. And then you soften. Another way to think about it is, is my heart open? I'm connecting to something higher, or is my heart closed? And this has been a meditation I've been practicing a lot lately because there's a lot right now that can make your heart open or close. So at the moments that I have conscious awareness to ask and I find that my heart is closed, I then can choose to open it. Now this is really interesting. Um, during the full moon spirit circle, they, they talk to us about the fact that when you're in a situation that makes your heart close, and then you're aware of that and you're saying to yourself, okay, I know I need to have an open heart, but this, this person or this situation really upsets me and I really don't want to open my heart to that. They said that it is absolutely okay to circumvent that situation in your mind and say, I'm opening my heart to my higher self, right? So it's, you're sort of like, you're, you're there in the situation, you're having a reaction to it, and the heart might want to stay closed. But they said one of the ways that they would circumvent that is to think about the heart being like a door. It's either open or closed, and when the door is open, my higher self can come through. So when you find yourself in a situation where you're like, I wanna be a bigger person, I wanna, I wanna take the high road, or I want to, I want to have an open heart, I'm really struggling here, they said, Imagine you're simply opening the door to your higher self. Now, doesn't that make it easy to open your heart in a challenging situation? And it did for me. I was like, wow, <laughs> okay, I will do, because it's, it's not even about, um, in my mind at least, I think, well, this is the direct challenge that I'm being faced with. So it's like, if I can't open my heart to this situation or this person, then I've somehow failed. Um, and my higher self, my team's response to that is, 
um, open yourself up to your higher self then allow that to work through you right stop trying to do it from the human level invite higher you in and it can do it does that make sense so if you're in a if you're having one of those days or one of those moments where it really feels like it wants to shut you down and just you just can't give it for whatever reason open your heart up to the highest part of you that's all you're doing that's all you have to do let that come in and it'll do the rest and that's kind of like taking the reins and giving them over to source over to god whatever you want to call it give it over to that and allow that to work through you. What if you don't have to solve everything at the human level? What if we don't have to solve everything at the human level? Let that sit with us. Let's let that like hang in there. What if it's not all about having to do it at the hardest level? What if it's simply about allowing something bigger to work through you? I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I do things the hard way just because <laughs> Just because I think I have to. There have been a lot of situations in my life where I did it the hard way simply because I thought I had to. And for me, the hard way is the is being in my human awareness rather than opening myself up to higher awareness, which we are all given access to. Um, and I feel like sometimes at this time period is just like, hey, guess what? There's a chance. You got a choice here. You got a choice to do it this way or hard way or easy way. And um you know, it's, I think that it's, uh, it's amazing <laughs> that a lot of us are choosing doing it the hard way because I think we earnestly think that that's how we have to do it. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like, they'll get it. Like, I feel like our teams just kind of sit back and go, she'll figure it out. She's going to get it. <laughs> For those who haven't played karma cards, there are three decks here, the planets, signs of the Zodiac and the houses of astrology. I've already asked my team, what's the message right now? And this message is for August 5th through the 12th. I've already pulled the cards. I have two sets of answers. I have action answers in red and outcome answers in blue. And all you have to do is decide whether you need an action related answer or outcome. So Pluto and Aquarius are all over the place in 2020. Pluto is still in retrograde and this is all shadow work. Pluto in retrograde is all about power structures, being restructured and doing the shadow work with ourselves and getting a lot of opportunities to do shadow work. Aquarius keeps popping up. The last full moon was in Aquarius, um, but Aquarius pops up a lot in my readings right now because we're moving into the age of Aquarius. The next golden age will be the age of Aquarius. And today the house is the first house which is this awareness of self from and that's probably why that message came up about my will versus thy will right because the first house is that house of self awareness right and um and the dawn of the ego of like i am a person i am me this is me i am my own thing and that's a, that person over there is their own thing right so um now, before I go further, I just want to say ego is incredibly important in the development of the soul. We can't skip it. We would never be allowed to skip developing an ego. The ego, this period of time that we're in, is, is a monumental time in history for um, us as a group. This graduation from... The idea of separation into consciously co-creating together. That's what we're moving into is this conscious working together for the, the greater good. It was crucial that we had the lessons of ego so that we could make the greatest choice we'll ever make. And that is either the choice to go it alone or the choice to go it together because we are fully capable of going it alone, but it's a very painful path that um, is, is very spiritually kind of devoid. And um, it's painful because the belief is you're separate and so therefore nothing can be with you, right? Whereas consciously 
recognizing that you have the ability to go it alone, but you're choosing to go at at creating life and moving forward, evolving with others because we're better together. And there's this weird like remembering of doing this together and it felt so much better. And when we choose that, we're also choosing sort of a, a type of protection. Uh, it, it, it's a protected path. Um, so the, the ego is incredibly important. It's just so misunderstood and it can also be like so out of balance. It can go so far out of balance um, because you can go down a whole path of ego development. And the ego is sort of like, um, it's like you're the master and the ego is the student. And one day the student realizes it can surpass the master if it wants to. And many times our ego tries. So our job at first is to develop the ego. And then it is to learn how to have mastery, have mastery and balance of self. For those who are choosing red or action, your spiritual action is to resurrect your vision immediately. Resurrect your vision immediately. So when Aquarius is talking about vision, it's oftentimes the vision of the future. Um, and interestingly enough, it's like if we get caught into the controlling aspect or the lower of, okay, so they're showing me that scenario of the theater again where we're on the floor, or I mean we're standing on the ground or we're up in the sky. If we're getting stuck in that lower view, our vision of the future can get dim pretty fast because from what we can see here, it doesn't look great. However, when we go into our heart, and that is in through the heart and up to the higher self, I just want to show you that like, if I were to stand sideways and do that, show you in through the heart and up through the higher self, that would be an L shape, okay? In through the heart, up through the higher self, L shape. The word love starts with an L, right? So and just take that in for a second. If you were to go up through your higher self and look at that vision, it would have a very different vision of the future. And sometimes um, my friends and I, we play this game where we talk about what the future holds. And when we go into the heart, man, there's a lot of things to be excited about for what the future holds. The future of um, energy, the future of medicine, the future of community, the future of economy. Um, there's so many, the future of humanity, right? When you go into that through the heart, in and up, um, your vision expands. And when we get in our heart, very rarely do I, I hear anyone say they're feeling true fear for the future. Um, I haven't heard many people say that. I've had many people say, I have this irrational belief that it's going to work out. Like they might not be fully on board with it, but I don't hear anyone saying that they're seeing something horrible, which is um, amazing. So they're asking you to resurrect your vision immediately. Go in and up and see what's coming. Your mental action. Get to the heart of what is new and different about the way you project yourself. Okay, mental action. Get into the heart of what is new and different about the way you project yourself. So during this time period that we've been in, we, we've been in a, a type of chrysalis, we're already starting to emerge during this time. There's, there's a new, we, we've had an alchemical shift inside of us and it's gonna continue. Something is new and different about you. Maybe it's the way that you can understand concepts. Maybe it's the way you can retain information. Maybe it's how much you can get into your compassion. Maybe it's how you have learned to be more self-aware and, and focus on self-care. Something is new and different about you. You've already started leveling up and they want you to pay attention to that right now. Physical action, do or die. You must use an unconventional way and do it on your own. <laughs> do or die so that's that's the pluto energy is always really dramatic um and it's like now right it wants you to get it now um you must use an unconventional way and do it on your own so mm, this is 
This is again about free will. Um, a little bit about herd mentality, a little bit about free will. If you don't see your path clearly laid out, like if it's not a path others are trotting, but you feel like it's what you, what's available to you isn't quite right, you need to forage your own, right? And this means like, um, again, this is coming from this, this, this alchemical change in you. Um, taking your path, it's always going to be just you on the path. And I know that sounds weird. When we're talking about working together, how is it just us? Each path is a unique signature in and of itself. Your path is a part of your spiritual energetic signature. It's what makes, it's a very intimate part of what makes you unique. You're going to forge it alone. No one's going to quite follow your path. But we're all doing that at the same time. So that's where we are together, is that no one really gets out of this, meaning like no one's cl not climbing the mountain. It's just not everyone is taking the same mountain path. Um, so just understand that. Like it, if you're waiting or if you're trying to get on someone else's path, recognize that at some point what you do in, to move forward is going to be unique to you. And as you can kind of get behind that, there's less anxiety about it and there's more mm, self-assuredness that this is the right way to go for you. The spiritual outcome at this time, the need for control of genius to experiment with who you are. <laughs> The need for control of, so maybe this is why the whole message earlier was brought up about my will versus uh, my will into thy will. The need for control. That again, control is a false mechanism. It's, a, it's this weird belief that I can somehow, I know what's better for nature than nature. Right? When the humans got involved in Yosemite Park and said, oh, there's too many wolves here. Can't have this many wolves. And they took them out and everything went haywire. The river dried out because of it. That's human intervention. That's this thing of like, I know better than nature. What's good for nature? Um, and it, they had to go rebalance it to get everything to flow again. So the need for control is part of what's coming up in us right now. Um, the genius to experiment with who you are. My will, thy will, right? So what I think will make... Uh, mold me or create the future I want, I believe I can get that from my human perspective. Um, and that's the control part. But if you were to let go and allow more of your higher self, more of your source essence to flow through, you would actually be receiving genius. That is what genius literally is. Those who are genius, they weren't born different. They simply allowed the universe to flow through their unique channel. And they had an awareness of that. They had an awareness that something bigger was working through them and all they did was step back so that could happen. They got out of their own way. So it's asking us to understand that we're gonna get in our way and to practice trying to get out of our own way. Mental outcome at this time, an obsession with the discoveries of your desires an obsession with the discoveries of your desires what this is telling me i mean with pluto right pluto is a really intense energy and an intense planet um and interestingly it just it has a lot of mental energy attached to it and this is and the obsession part right when we get fixated that's a mental thing to get fixated on something We've all experienced that if we're in meditation, right? And we're really trying to get out of our mind and meditate, open the space, and our mind gets fixated on a thought. Like we're like, oh, when I'm done with this, I've got to deal with this one problem. And then we go into all the little details about how we could deal with it, how that person's going to respond, what's going to happen next, right? That's a fixation. Um, an obsession with the discoveries of your desires. This might be about, because as we attempt to allow more universal flow remember by allowing ourselves to be a channel to the universe we are moving into genius it, there, there's probably going to be this conversation i get in our 
head about what we want, what we think we want, what we're afraid of what will happen if we let go of what we want, how we think the universe might not care about what we want, right? We might have this whole kind of fixation about my plan, but but my plan. And I don't know about any of you. In fact, I'm, I can almost guarantee all of us have had to adjust plans, adjust our plans. Some of us more drastically than others in some cases. But our fixation about our plan is what they're talking about right now. That even though we might be hearing the advice and kind of heeding it to some degree going, okay, I'm going to try this. There's still a, a fixation about the plan that comes from this shadow work. Um, is Pluto an anxious planet? It can be. I think what, because remember, Pluto's the god of the underworld, right? So it's talking about going into the dark. Where would anxiety live? Anxiety is fear of the future and our fear of how we can't control the future. So I would absolutely say, I mean, it's definitely connected to anxiety and I'm sure someone who has uh, Pluto as a, a ruler or sub-ruler can recognize that, that, that impulse because we believe that our control is our power when really our greatest power is the ability to channel energy through us in any way we desire. Okay, physical outcome, a power struggle resulting from the eccentricity of your actions. This might be an internal power struggle that I get and not necessarily, it could be an external one if other people are involved, but what I really get is it's a power struggle within, right? And this is has to do with the human POV, the human point of view, and the higher self source energy point of view, right? And the power struggle resulting from the eccentricity of your action, if it's foreign to you to allow more source in your day, more source in your choices, like to sit back and let go. Like for example, if you happen to be a really A-type person who has been successful to a degree with controlling the environment and creating the plan and doing things in a way that feels like it's perfecting, um, it can really be uncomfortable to sit in the passenger seat and say, I give my life over to you Let's make it a great one, but you know the best, right? Like that, <laughs> I don't see a type A person doing that with ease. I see that being, um, um, definitely being a power struggle. And remember, this is not about perfection or getting it right. It's always about process. And the more that we can practice allowing something to channel through us, a higher source to channel through us, um, the easier it gets. So the universe, God source loves you and it loves your choices because all of your choices create experience, which creates information, which gets recorded and is the most valuable currency of the universe is information that is what the, the universe is about. It's a record. It, it's keeping record of everything. That was the original intent was to know thyself, right? Like know what, what I am. Um, and we are each a unique expression of that. So there is no wrong choice in the end. But if you're feeling like you're trying to make things happen and it's just not working out, have you tried saying... Uh, from my point of view, I only know so much, but I can sense that there's more. And so I'm going to allow that more to work through me for the highest good of all, including me. And I trust that the universe has my back. Have you tried that yet? What would happen if you did? Right? And remember, um, sometimes it can be the most incredible feeling and that can be really encouraging other times it's like great thanks for opening the door let's clean house first um, and sometimes that can feel like you made a choice that you're not so happy with and yet though I have to say those moments though are some of the greatest moments in my life when I when it felt like it was falling apart it was falling together so I just want to leave you with that. On the days where it feels like it's falling apart, 
falling apart, what if it was actually falling together? All right. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate and love you all. Um, I'm going to be practicing. I hope you get a chance to practice too. Um, and I'm sending you so much love and appreciation. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time I release a new video. Until then, stay magical.